Lanza Flight 508 was traveling from Lima to Pucallpa, Peru on December 24, 1971, when it encountered bad weather and a storm, and was struck by lightning. The deadliest lightning strike in aviation history occurred when the jet disintegrated and plummeted into the Amazon rainforest. Just one of the 92 passengers would live. On October 10, 1954, Julianne Coep was born in Lima, Peru. She was the daughter of ornithologist Maria Coep and biologist Hans Wilhelm Coep, both of German descent. Prior to 1968, when they opted to follow their interests in scientific fieldwork in the Amazon jungle with their young adolescent daughter, both of her parents were employed at the Museum of Natural History in Lima. In the heart of Peru's lowland jungle, they built the Panguana Ecological Station, a center for research on fish, insects, and mammals. Because of the research station's isolation, Julianne attended home school for a while before the local educational authorities mandated that she return to Lima to complete her high school education. Late in December of 1971, Julianne completed her education. In order to allow Julianne to attend her high school graduation ceremony, she and her mother agreed to postpone their planned schedule of returning to the research station a week before Christmas. The only tickets left when the mother and daughter were prepared to board a flight for Panguana on December 24 at noon were for a Lanza trip. Since its establishment in 1963, Lanza, formerly known as Linea's Arias Nacional South America, has served as a vital link between Lima and other parts of Peru. International locations like Chile, Honduras, and Miami in the United States were added to their list as the company grew over the years. The business was infamous for its poor safety record. In 1966, Flight 101 from Lima to Cusco crashed into a mountainside due to pilot error, killing all 49 people on board. After an engine fire four years later, Lanza Flight 502 crashed into a valley, killing all 99 on board as well as two civilians on the ground. Lax engine maintenance methods and pilot mistake were to blame. The public was aware of Lance's past performance, and many people considered the airline to be a last resort. In fact, there was a proverb that described the airline's performance, Lanza falls on its belly. Julianne and her mother boarded Lanza Flight 508 from Lima to Iquitos despite various hesitations. At Jorge Chavez International Airport, they boarded the Lockheed L-188 Electra turboprop, and they experienced a smooth and uneventful takeoff. The plane encountered a dangerous rainstorm in the middle of the journey with little advance notice, and lightning struck the aircraft. The subsequent events were recounted by Julianne as follows, then I immediately notice a bright white light over the right wing. I'm not sure if it was an explosion or a lightning strike. I become completely time blind. I'm not sure if this all lasts minutes or just a little instant. The airplane's tip abruptly drops sharply to the ground. The entire aisle leading to the cockpit, which is below me, is visible to me. People are yelling in fear and making piercing pleas for aid, all around me is the sound of the falling turbines, which I will hear repeatedly in my dreams. I then hear my mother calmly declare, now it's all over, over everything, as clear as glass. The sounds of people screaming suddenly stop. It seems as though the sound of the turbines has vanished. I'm no longer aboard the plane, and my mother is no longer by my side. I'm still seated and secured, but I'm by myself. And I'm plummeting, cutting through the air. Julianne was around three kilometers up when she plunged, or two miles. She was still fastened to her seat, which was in a row with two other chairs, and was tumbling downward. She was awake for the most of the fall but lost consciousness just before landing. 
She was resting in the mud, staring up at the jungle canopy, when she awoke. She had multiple bruises and scrapes, including a severe wound to her upper right arm, a ruptured ligament in her knee, and a shattered collarbone. These were the only visible wounds, despite her terrible fall. Although miraculously surviving the crash, she was in no way secure. She was now cut off from civilization and lost in the bush. The canopy blocked her view, but she could hear the search planes flying overhead. She was aware that if she wanted to survive, she would have to move. She found a creek, and deciding that it would probably lead to a river where people may live or fish, she made the decision to follow it. And so Julianne carried out this action for ten days. She moved cautiously along the bank as she looked out for snakes and other animals. Later she swam in the filthy water. She ate a solitary packet of candy she had discovered in the wreckage where she had landed, drank river water, and dozed off on sandbanks. She had no idea what had happened to the other flyers, including her mother, at this point. Three human bodies that were still linked to their chairs besides the river, being eaten by vultures, further increased her fear for her mother. After ten exhausting days, Julianne saw a boat parked alongside the river. A wooden cabin with a palm leaf roof was accessible via a trail. Julianne sought safety in the hut, expecting that the boat's owners would arrive shortly. She attended to the maggot-infested wound on her arm as she waited. She went back to the boat on the river, siphoned gasoline from its fuel supply, and applied it to the wound, which successfully drove out many of the maggots. As a youngster, she had seen her father treat a similar wound on their pet dog using kerosene. The sound of men returning to the hut, which served as a base for nearby woodcutters, startled Julianne up the following morning. While they had heard of the plane tragedy, the men were shocked by her appearance. They fed Julianne and assisted in dressing her wounds after she revealed that she had survived the Lance of flight. After sleeping during the night, Julianne was transported by canoe downstream for seven hours to a location where she could be flown to a hospital and eventually be reunited with her father. Seventy-one passengers and all six members of the plane's crew perished in the collision. The incident was survived by fifteen people, but all but Julianne died from their injuries before they could be rescued. This included the Julianne's mother. Several occurrences were assumed to be responsible for Julianne's miraculous survival. Her descent was slowed by the helicopter effect caused by the spinning of the chair portion to which she was fastened. This had prevented a fatal fall by cushioning the impact of the fall with the help of a stormy updraft and the forest canopy. Then, because Julianne having grown up in the woods, she was able to maintain her composure and proceed sanely as she made her way towards safety. The crew was under some pressure to make up for earlier delays during the busy Christmas season, which may have contributed to their choice not to deviate around the storm, according to an examination into the incident. Additionally, it was discovered that the aircraft, which was one of Lance's last surviving aircraft, and was constructed primarily of spare components from retired Lance aircraft, had been in incredibly poor condition. Following the catastrophe, the business's operating permit was revoked and Lanza permanently ceased operations. Julianne's injuries healed up. She received a lot of media attention for her survival story, and numerous blatantly incorrect claims about it were made, including that she had abandoned other survivors and that she had constructed a raft to get out of the forest. She relocated to Germany and enrolled at the University of Kiel to study biology. Thirteen years later, she succeeded her father in the position of Panguana's director and expedition coordinator. Julianne revisited the accident site as part of a Werner Herzog documentary and authored a book about her experiences several years after the tragedy. 
Julianne currently works as a doctor and goes by the name Diller. Even though she miraculously survived an aircraft accident and a 10-day jungle journey, Dr. Diller is still well known for more than just that. She later went on to become a renowned zoologist. She frequently flies and has committed a substantial portion of her life to protecting the same rainforest ecosystem that nearly claimed her life. She stated the following in relation to this, I was rescued by the jungle. I didn't end up there for its fault, 